Hi everyone, this is a free lecture from my course, Learn Maya, A Beginner's Guide to Creating Realistic Scenes. You can get the full 14 hour course for only $10 if you follow the link in the description. Hope you enjoy. In this lesson we'll take a look at some deformers. So I'm going to create a cylinder. And I'm just going to add some divisions in the height. So we've got plenty of divisions there. And then I'll just duplicate this Control D move it along and I'll press shift D to repeat that so I've got five of those okay so let's have a look at our deformers so I've got the first one here I'm going to go to the deform menu here I'm in the modeling tool set by the way up here so let's go to deform uh, nonlinear tear that off so the first one is bend and let me just turn on wireframe here you can see that we get a manipulator there and if I was to open up my outliner here you can see there's the bend handle there and that's the actual deformer so we can go to the show manipulator tool to actually manipulate that or we could select it and inside the attribute editor we actually get the bend deformer there which you can adjust by just sliding that along okay so you can use the channel box here and change the curvature by using the middle mouse button excuse me the the bend input there curvature use your middle mouse button there or what i found a bit more intuitive is to use the uh, t key so the show manipulator tool and you get these little blue dots which you can then use your left mouse button and just pull as well so you can actually manipulate things a bit more visually just like that okay and then you can obviously rotate this or scale it up if you wanted to to adjust the manipulator handle there okay I can bring back my manipulator there we go bring it back there so that's the bend deformer and you can see it always gets created facing upwards facing the y direction so you should expect that it doesn't actually rotate itself which is a bit annoying but the, that's the way it is so just just expect that so if I select this guy and do a flare, you can see that we get the flare deformer. Again, I'm already in my show manipulator. I can use the T key to do that. And now we can actually adjust this stuff interactively again. I'm just going to change the background color here. Maybe you can see this a bit better. Maybe there. Turn off the grid. There we go. And this middle one's pretty cool. It's, it's a curvature, so you can have it go inwards or outwards. I use that a fair bit. It's pretty nice. Get a nice sort of soft fall off there. So you can see you get two axes here, one on the other side. And if you want it to be exact, you can see you've got numbers here which you can type in the number. So if I wanted 0 0.8, just type that in and you can see they're going to be exactly the same. Okay, so that's the flare deformer. And we also got a bound here so we can only affect the top or the bottom or whatever you want okay and obviously we can move this and rotate it and scale it just like before as well so let's just grab this guy and do a sign and this is going to give you a sign curve which is quite handy let's just grab this and show manipulator turn this on so you can see there we've got a sine wave we can actually control the length of that by pulling this down so we can make that a bit smaller the wavelength and the amplitude here and then this is the fall off here and we can all get, we can grab this one to offset that as well so we can animate this offset i've used this to animate creatures tails for example in in the water and you can put them on a path and then add this at the end so that it only affects part of it so i normally turn this down like this and then you can affect the end of the object and animate this offset so if you look at this this is the offset here and you can change that this drop off is quite handy if you turn that on you can actually let's just change this back to the way it was here put this back down maybe increase the amplitude here so if i were to change the drop off this one here uh, just a quick note that the virtual slider doesn't work if you've got the show manipulator on so i'm just going to go to move for example and that way this drop off will work so this drop off if it's on minus one you can see it's dropping off from the middle and then it affects the end and that's what i use when i'm animating creatures so the body doesn't move but the tails 
the tail will will move so you can then change the offset so you can animate the offset and you can see it's affecting just the end there and if I were to go back here maybe just bring this whoops bring this up so it's not affecting that end here you can see what I mean so now if I change my offset you can see only the end is changing okay so you can have something like a, a flag waving as well uh, change the wavelength here let's make that a lot less and then you can see okay so that's pretty handy that's a science sign deformer and so let's have a look at the next one we've got our squash deformer so we can grab this oops and you can see it affects it's actually going to maintain the volume of the object so you can get this nice squashing action here and this has got quite a few controls to control where this happens from if you look inside the squash deformer here you've got the expand which is the actual mount okay you've got the factor which is how much it actually bends up and down and then you've got a few other things like where it starts and where it finishes and the low and high bound okay so you can play with that I don't use that very often you can use that to animate obviously more cartoony characters but it's pretty cool so next one along is the twist so if I grab that come along here and then this one has got like a circular control here so if you just grab that you should be able to see it rotate it's very difficult to see it rotate in this one because it's rotating and it's just a, s a cylinder so let's go into our let's just get rid of this guy and maybe create a cube might be easier to see with a cube like that make sure you've got some divisions in there otherwise it won't be able to deform and then we'll go back to our tiki and then twist this so you can see that it's twisting if I look at the attributes here this is the attributes here so with all of these deformers you can see that you get uh, an envelope and this envelope you can paint the weight so if you click on the object you can actually right click and say paint non-linear and then paint the weights of this so white means that it's completely affected let's say I don't want to affect the top here I can actually go into my tool here and the best way of doing it gradually is actually using the scale command so if you change that to something like 0 0.9 it's going to slowly decrease the value it's B for brush size so if you hold down B use your left and right mouse button you can change that so now you can see it's slowly gonna paint that gray and it's having less and less of an effect okay or I could actually just type in a value that I want like zero turn on replace and now I can just paint zero there okay and then what I could do like that what I could do then is say smooth and then flood it a few times just to smooth that transition between those two if I wanted to okay so you can do that on any of these guys as well so you can apply more than one at the same time and you can have a look at the changing the order as well so if I wanted to add another one of these so add a bend deformer so I've added a bend deformer there change the curvature here okay so you can see the order in which that's happening now if I wanted to change that order let's just turn off the x-ray there so if I wanted to change this order what I could do is select my object click on this inputs button all inputs and then use my middle mouse button to bring it down and now you can see bend is on the bottom so it, the bend is being applied before the twist so it looks different okay makes all the difference okay so those are some of those deformers let's look at the wave you won't be able to see the wave with one of these so I'm going to create a plane and again add some divisions and then add the wave deformer press the T key let's just grab this guy doesn't seem to be doing much let's just use the virtual slider then amplitude and you can see the amplitude there Okay, you can change the wavelength. 
okay, offset. So you can animate that. And then you've got drop off, so you can have a drop off from the middle, like this, or drop off from the end, like this. So it's strongest in the middle and weakest at the end. Pretty cool. Okay, you've got the minimum and maximum radius as well. So if you don't want it to be affected in the middle, you can increase that minimum radius and it's only going to affect outside of that. So now it's only affecting the outside of that. Okay, so you can get some nice effects with that as well. Just show you one last deformer, which is the texture deformer. So I'm just going to create another plane here and just increase the resolution here. This might be useful for modeling as well. Just go to the deform menu and create a and create a texture deformer. Here it is. Okay, and then let's have a look at the attributes for that. If I clap, grab the texture deformer, I have to assign a texture. So inside here, you've got a texture section. And if I grab that and maybe put on a noise, you can see that it deforms the object based on the on the image that I've given it. So if I go back to there and click on this little triangle here, I can change my texture. This is a procedural texture, so you can see that it's being created by these parameters here, and this will change interactively, so it's pretty cool. So you can change the amplitude and the pattern here. Obviously you could paint your own. So it's kind of like an interactive displacement map, but obviously it's only going to affect the polygons that are there. It's not going to add any polygons in this case. So you've got the strength here, you've got the offset, so you can move it up and down. And you can also paint weights on that as well. Okay, so in this lesson we had a look at the nonlinear deformers and we also looked at the texture deformer and we had a look at how to change the order of those deformers as well.